Hey everybody, uh, my name is Isaac and I'm Shaftev. I'm here with another video. So I was recently uh, bumming around the Godot docs as you do and I was reading about mouse input coordinates and I saw this uh, little piece of GD script here to get the coordinates of the viewport and I just thought it was pretty interesting. Maybe we could do something with that. And I've always been a massive fan of uh, MOBAs, Dota 2 specifically back in 2012, 2013, I was playing that a hell of a lot. Uh, I think in a year and a half, I maybe had up to 1300 hours in that. And so I thought, you know, with this in little piece of code, we could definitely make a MOBA style or even an RTS style camera. Um, and here's a clip of me uh, from a couple of years ago playing as Darkseer with a pretty killer Aegis steel. Pretty proud of this one. Uh, but it gives a pretty good example of what I'm going for. You know, you've got the mouse movement and the click to move. Uh, that's all I'm going to try to implement at the moment. I'm not really going to try to take it any further. Uh, just see how far we can get with the documentation. So I just started with the base code from the docs. So the first thing I did was just drop in uh, this formula that I thought of as soon as I saw the, the docs. It's essentially just a ratio of the screen size and the mouse position. Effectively what you're gonna get is a number between zero and one of where the mouse is on the, on the window, which is great because it doesn't matter what size the viewport is, it's always gonna be the same. So you can use this uh, at any scale, it'll still work. And I really like that. Came out exactly how I expected. You've got a zero on the or the right hand side of the screen and one on the left. I originally thought maybe I'd take it at 10% and start moving the screen. I changed that later on. It turned out it wasn't the right way to go about it. So we dropped in a tween. Um, moving most of my nodes these days with tweens, it just works a lot better than any kind of translation function. It's a lot smoother. You get a lot more control out of it. It's still a bit finicky but it works great otherwise. So the plan was to uh, take the ratio and start tweening the camera uh, once it reached a certain point. Uh, at this point when I was working on it, it was definitely 10%. I made a pretty big error when I was working on this. Obviously you can see here from the code that I was planning to call the function to move the camera uh, in the input function, which is, uh, I can tell you right after this when I test it, it just doesn't work the way I expected it. Um, I'm pretty new to Godot, but I did actually know this. I had just forgotten while I was coding. I have a tendency to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning when I work on these, and I guess my brain wasn't working that well yet, but I learned pretty quickly that it wasn't gonna work. Uh, as far as the function for the move camera goes, it's pretty much exactly the same as what I ended on. Uh, I just get the, at the start of the function, I just get the camera's position and create a new variable called new position and add the direction to the camera position. So all I'm doing every frame is just adding five in this case and then tweening it along. So every time the camera moves, it gets pushed along five pixels. It works pretty well. And the, the tween definitely helps with that. I like to use trans sign for my tweening most of the time. I find it works the best for movement anyway. I originally had it as tween ease in out, but I had to change it to ease out. It just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. Okay, let's go see if I can spot my own error. It's a bit slow to start with and it's going the wrong way. But that's okay, it's easy to fix. The other thing I do is make the camera a little bit faster. Um, with tween, the smaller the number, the faster it goes. And there we go. And obviously in the input function, only working when the mouse is moving because the input function is only called when there is an input. Just move that to the process function and we're off to the races. The only thing I really need to be doing in the input function is setting the ratio. So every time the mouse moves, we check to see if the ratio, we, or we update the ratio. And um, then in the process function, we're just checking that and uh, calling the move function if it's within our parameters. Um, and that's it, really. It's a pretty simple setup. Also, 
had to make the position ratio variable global, otherwise I wasn't going to be able to access it from both places. I can't spell either if you haven't worked that out. I gave up, copied and pasted. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. Let's test out and see if this is working. And now it's working exactly how I pictured it, except with that easy and out. It doesn't feel so great. It's an easy fix though. The other thing I found actually with this, you'll notice then that there was an error thrown, that there was an invalid get index on X. So I think that was because uh, the mouse was within the ratio that I had set at the time that the game launched and before the variable variable had been set yet, um, I didn't encounter that error anymore. I'm not too sure how often you'd find it in a real world scenario. Hopefully not too much. I'd probably have to play around with it a bit to see, maybe fix up and do a bit of error checking before actually going into the game. Oh, and there's the other mistake I made. Uh, when, you move, when you're checking the Y on the viewport, you need to move in the Z to go forward and backwards, not in the Y, you'll go up and down. Okay, and the other thing that I experimented around with was lerping the camera. Um, this feels pretty good and it looks cool, but right after I did this, I jumped into a bot game in Dota and I sort of played around with the camera to see if I was getting close to what I thought and I realized that it was actually pretty snappy. Um, and this makes a lot of sense for something like a MOBA. It, um, you want to be precise. So that's what we ended up changing it to. Uh, I took out all the lerping and here's the final piece of code that I came up with. Um, I swapped out the fixed coding for the so I put it all in the process function and uh, I set up a max speed constant that I was adding to the X and Z for the camera movement variable and just added that to the camera position at the end that's it that's all there was to it and um, yeah it works pretty well Okay, let's have a look at how I handled the movement. So I watched a, a tutorial from Ms. Ziz's a couple of weeks ago on using the navigation mesh to set up uh, navigation for enemies to chase the player. Um, and that basically, you can use that exact same technique uh, to move your player in an RTS situation. Um, I'll link to that tutorial down below. Um, I read a whole lot about different ways that you can get click mouse click input from the screen onto the 3D world. Uh, there's a few different ways you can raycast. When I was originally testing this, I decided to just go with the inbuilt signal on input event, which will give you basically all the different information that you need. I don't think it's particularly good. And I think if I was going to do this again, or if I was going to take any project further, I would actually raycast from the camera because when you are using this input event, if your mouse is over an other object that's not emitting the signal, it won't work and it's not particularly accurate either. You'll see in this video that when I click on the enemy, it actually takes you to a different spot. So accuracy is really important in these kind of games and I think raycasting from the camera would work better. I haven't tested it yet, but we'll see. So all I do with the input event signal is feed that into the path and that's it. I've also got a mouse indicator to tell us where we've clicked. It's good to check accuracy. Okay, let's see how this thing works. There he goes, and he'll move no problems to any location that I want him to. It looks like it's 
not as accurate, but that's because the mouse indicator is raised off the, the map a little bit just so it doesn't collide with the ground. But yeah, it does seem to have some struggles when you try to click on a location that is covered by another object. And that's basically because of what I said before. If there's something covering over the object that's sending the signal for the building for the input event, then it's not going to work that great. All right, guys, that just about sums it up for my Fortnite. Um, let me know what you thought of this. I was originally going to go for a full on tutorial, but I've sort of decided that I'm not experienced enough to do that. Um, I'm not a seasoned coder. I've only been doing it, you know, for a few years now and Gido only 12 months. So I'm going to hold off on that and sort of just reflect on what I've done rather than try to teach people how to use this. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.